So this is what we are looking to create today in this tutorial. Okay, welcome folks to hopefully a short tutorial. Uh, I've had some students uh, in the past and recently talking about not being able to model trees in Maya. I wanted to do a quick and dirty model of a tree. Model it primarily in Maya, put it over into 3D coat, paint it, put it back into Maya and put um, put some leaves on it and uh, we'll just see how far we get, shall we? So without further ado, let's go. So the most basic, basic way of doing it is I'm just going to create the cylinder. Just elongate that. Okay, so what I'm going to do, you can like create trees with um, using the uh, um, CV uh, curve tools, whatever, but again, I might do that in a separate tutorial. This is just like the perhaps most basic way. You may know of other ways, but this is just the most basic way that I know of. Multi cut tool, control, I'm just going to create some subdivisions. So basically, I'm putting these in here just so I can sort of create some shape. Make sure that you are in edge mode and pressing the R key I'm just going to expand that out, probably not too much, I don't want to go too wild. And basically want to taper taper this in, so it's gonna oops, it's gonna do this incrementally. Something like that. Again, I'm not going to get too fussed about it. So don't don't put too much detail into this because when we put it into 3D coat, you could do the same thing we're putting it into ZBrush. That's absolutely fine. Same principles. Okay, something like that. And then I'm just going to do a bit of a shift. So <coughs> if I just Click on that and then just kind of just create some bends just so it's not entirely straight. <coughs> so something like that. And then what I'm going to do is go to object mode and I'm going to use this trunk now I'm going to press shift and D I'm going to use this trunk to basically form branches so I'm going to use the uh, scale key rotate this and basically just start maneuvering and sort of putting this in, in some kind of uh, I might just right click and do the vertexes on this and just taper these down again. I'm just doing this very quickly. Let's hold the B key down because I think I've got a feeling the brush is quite large. I've got it on soft selection, you can see that's huge. Okay, there we go, take that down. Right, and use the R key, just tape that down. The reason I'm doing that is so I can sort of jam it into the trunk. Okay. Okay, so something like that. And then uh, Shift and D again. Just rotate that. Might even just shrink it down. And just maneuver that into place, like so. To get a better view of that so I can see what I'm doing. 
don't worry about these edges we can get all those smoothed out when we get into the other program so the main purpose of this really is it's one to it's going to create a boolean of that just so that's together as an object shift and D I'm going to copy this one as well so again just maneuver that around and again you can sort of change the shape of it if you like scale it down you don't want it all looking exactly the same because uh, it'll just it won't look very good and also just put it at different stages right because trees aren't symmetrical shift and D again again I'm just going to enlarge that up change the rotations something like that shift and D that I don't want to spend too long on this because it's really the the aim of this video is really just to show you the just the principles Maybe we just one on the other side there. Let's go off that. And again, you could put more branches in there, of course. You could do there's a there's a ton more stuff you could do. You could spend a bit of time, you know, a bit more time on this, but I'm not doing that today. Something like that. That's a kind of start. Or maybe one more. One more. It's a bit further down, maybe. Just not so aesthetically, at least, like there's a bit of a. It's a bit more pleasing. Maybe just one more actually. And then we'll leave it at that. Scale it down a bit. Okay, so we're going to go with that, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shift and click Boolean, shift and click Boolean, Boolean, Boolean that, Boolean that, so on and so forth. Okay, so if I just go into X ray mode. There's no geometry going on there, it's all kind of joined. Okay, so it looks alright. Then, <coughs> excuse me, what I'm going to do is select that, I'm going to export it, export selection, and I'll put it in the desktop. I'll create a little folder, I'll just call it tree test. Open that. Tree, export selection. Okay, 3D coat. Here we come. Right, I'm going to. You can import it through voxel sculpting. I'm going to do it through surface uh, surface sculpting, and then I'll change it through to a voxel. So, uh, where are we? Lose my thread now. Tree test. There we go. Is that the one? There we go. Tree OBJ. Open that. So we can see it there. That all looks tickety boo. And uh, just make sure it's import separate instance. Import without voxelization. That's fine. Click o, click apply. That's fine. Click yes. Get rid of that box there. And I'm just going to change it over now. So I'm going to click on this here. Something like 500,000 voxels. OK. 
Okay. And uh, to give it some kind of shader on there. Oh, select it first and then put it on one of the shaders. So something like that, just to kind of work with initially. And then what you can do is if I just select build up, check on the alphas here, just make sure it's on smooth. And then holding down shift, what you can do is, might be a little bit strong that, you can use the middle mouse just to sort of zoom out a little bit. And basically just smooth it all out, right? I mean, it's not going to be smooth, right? Because it's going to be bark, but just anything where I've got any anything that kind of looks like joints. Just be wary of this tool, though, because you can end up just shrinking your your branches and stuff out of existence. So um, just use sparingly. You can change the strength by using the left mouse button while you're holding shift and then bring it down like you can see that that's basically the strength that triangle i'm just, you know assuming that you've not used 3d code before but if you have then you'll know okay so all these little bits where i kind of jammed it all in on the model i can deal with all that And could go for a kind of shader now. There's got these little shaders in the in the corner. There. I can even create my own. So if I go down to let's have a look. New. Call this bark. I can actually import a picture. Of bark. Now I might have something knocking around somewhere. Got some bark texture there. Open that. There we are. So let's put it on there. You can see. And you can also play around with some of the other attributes like uh, a normal map. So you could choose. You know, you could choose. Well, ideally not color, right? I mean, you you know, you'd need to make it black and white. But um, but you can do that, you know, just, just create an, an effective, um, effective normal map, right? Because you don't be working from color. If you if you use normal maps before, you you know about that. Um, and you've got some stuff to do with cavity, which could be useful. I might just kind of keep, maybe just keep those colors as they are. I can maybe change them around anyway. We won't see any any we won't really see necessarily see any changes as such for the time being. We need to kind of put some texture on there. So I might just leave that as is for now. <clears throat> so now we've got this kind of like bark texture on there. You can also play around with scale. If I just zoom up, I think that's my texture there. And edit current uh, settings. You can play around with scale. Hopefully I've got the right one here there you can see that so if you want to you can sort of play around with texture and then you can put a, a sort of a, a, a bark effect on there so I could maybe even choose one of these alphas here and uh, I don't think the brush is turned up let's have a look at that So we see there we get we are getting some kind of effect going on there. And again, I don't want to spend too long on this. I'm just doing this really just to kind of give you the basics. And then you can kind of go from there. You can sort of then put as much detail in as you want. And if you want to, you know, use some of these other alphas, you can do, you know, like at the base. I think that's a little bit strong, that. You know, so you could add some. You 
know, just give it a bit more kind of character. You can import your own alphas as well if you want to. I mean, there's, all, there's, there's a whole host of things that you can do in 3D Coat. <coughs> But, you know, just try and make it look a little bit more organic. If you can, right. Probably a little bit too much. I might just smooth that out a little bit more. Maybe use the scrape tool. Just calm that down a little bit. All right, so we've got some form of a tree there. And then next what you'll want to do is right click Go to Auto Topo and Instant Meshes Auto. Click on that with the left button mouse. Set it to about 4,000 polys. It'll go through its little calculation and it'll take us through to Read Topo. Okay, and then we've got something that looks like this. Now, you can play around with this thing here called Additional Extrusion if you want to, because what we're going to do is we're going to do a bake. and the danger is, you can see here, these little spots coming out here will come out as black in the ambient occlusion because it's not really included now. We can kind of paint over it so it's not the end of the world. So I'm not going to kind of stress too much about that. We can kind of deal with that um, as and when. All right, and then just to be quick, I'm just going to go to edge loops put an edge loop in there and then I'm going to, of course you can do it manually, you can go around and create these kind of edge loops but I think for the sake of expediency I'm just going to go to auto map, it will basically map it all out, you can see there. And then if you hover over it shows you the entire thing, if you take your mouse away you can see the whole thing, now it's a bit like the thing with Maya and automatic. It's not ideal for <clears throat> for game engines, so it's not the ideal way, but if you're just sort of creating art, that's generally fine, but a lot of this stuff, if you put this into a game engine, you're making a game, it's going to zap the power, you know, the CPU and all that, so it's not the most ideal way, but <clears throat> if you're sort of creating something like a model that you're going to put into Marmoset or into Sketchfab, something like that, it's not going to cause massive problems. Anyway, there we are with that. Then you go to Bake, Bake with Normal Map, per pixel. Uh, leave all this as is. Yours might look like mine. Uh, just leave it. All you have to do is just click OK. Click OK. Uh, this could be useful for you. So depending on, you know, your normal. So for example, if I'm putting this back into Maya, <coughs> it might be beneficial to actually select where it's going to go into. So Maya, say 2015 plus, uh, but if maybe going into 3ds Max or Blender or anything like that, or even into a game engine, you might want to select that as well. It's just so it's more compatible for the program that you're using. So let's say I choose that, or we could leave it on unknown and leave it at 2048 by 2048. Click OK, and then leave it to do its bake. Okay, so that will put it into the uh, paint room over there. But before I go, that, go there, it's going to go back to Sculpt and take that away and then go through to Paint. So this is our baked out tree. Yeah, So this is low point. If I press W, you'll see there that's the retopologized uh, version, right? which is pretty cool. But as I predicted, you see these little spots here. It shouldn't really matter too much. Um, you can get rid of these by taking off ambient occlusion, but you'll lose something in the process. You know, and also you'll end up with this kind of grey. Now you could sort of paint over the top. <clears throat> I'll perhaps do another tutorial at another point. Going through, 
you know, uh, some of the stuff to do with uh, effects that you can put on here. We could, theoretically, we could put like a do a little touch up of this. We could call this layer touch up. And maybe attempt to paint over it. I'm not sure how successful I'll be. Let's try that. And let's try having a paint. I'll just go over to the alphas again. I don't know. Try something. Try one of these brushes. I don't know. Yeah, we just try and kind of mask over it. Maybe I'll just go through to the smart materials among that. Yeah, there we are. It's not really having a massive effect. I guess it's because it's it's um, it's below the ambient occlusion. So you can see now it's kind of over the top of that. So then, you know, there are some workarounds. <clears throat> you can see there it's a little bit matte. So you might want to play around with the roughness, perhaps. You can see that there, not too much. So, there, you know, it's not like the end of the world. If you end up with these sort of black spots, you can go around and sort of touch it up. And... Um, and there's, there's a whole bunch of other stuff you can sort of do with this paint effects. Um, we could put some moss on there perhaps, but not today. Alright. I'm hoping a lot of these branches are just going to be masked by uh, leaves, so I'm not going to get too, too worried about that. So that kind of looks okay, <clears throat> right? You can't really sculpt. We well, can't sculpt at all when you're in this paint um, paint area. Uh, that's to be done in the uh, when you're in sculpt mode. Anyway, so let's say I'm happy with that. I'm going to go to File, Export with Textures, Output. We'll put it in with our um, in our folder Tree Test, and I'll call it um, Tree Two, say. Click save. You can see that it's going to export the color, the roughness, the metalness, and uh, the normal map. Click OK. Right, let's have a look at Maya. So, I'm just going to move this to one side. And let's go to import. And this is our tree, so we've got the OBJ. Now we can, uh, we could probably put normal map in there. We'll put the color in there, the metalness and the roughness. I think we'll just leave for the time being. You know, personally speaking, I, I wouldn't. I don't tend to go into a lot of detail in Maya. Um, my focus is mainly like with game engine, so you know, I'd, I'd look to be connecting these up with you know in that. I'm not looking to render out a scene at least for this video anyway, in Maya. It's just generally like a workspace to kind of make models and then import them into a game engine. Anyway, we go import. Hit six. You can see there it's imported our tree. Yeah, with the textures. All right. Now, I'm not sure if the metalness is in there or not. Let's have a look. So it looks like it's got the colour in there. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, so it's got the specularity in there. So it looks like it has... Put it in there. There's the bump mapping though, which it kind of... Is it, it's not really there, so it can maybe... Okay, so... I don't want to fuss around too much, but we can maybe have a look at putting the normal in on there as well. Let's have a look. File. <coughs> Let's go and find our little file, which will be in our folder. Tree test there. And normal map. Open that. Yeah, so you can see it's stuck in there. And you, again, you could sort of play around with it. I'm not going to get too, 
you know, I'm not going to sort of mess around with that too much. But anyway, so we've got our normal map in there. Kind of looks okay. Oops, that kind of looks okay. All right. Next is the canopy, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to import a sphere, like so. And what I'm essentially what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put leaves on a sphere, and then just basically put it over the over the model. So I'm going to go to face mode. So something like say that. I'll take it off soft selection. And hold down control and maybe just crop that a little bit. Okay. Hit delete. And then if you want to, you can sort of use the vertex mode with soft selection and just deform it a little bit just so it's not uh, it's not um, completely domed let me just undo that a little bit let's just start that one again the uh, soft selection brush was off was off let's try that again All right, we'll just go with something like that, right? Again, you could spend more time on this if you so wish. Okay, so we've got something like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to... What I'll probably do is I'll probably just go use a projection on this. Use a planar, maybe. Planar. I want to make sure that it's from camera there and project. If I then open up the UV editor, it should show up there like so. Go to UVs. I'll just do a marquee on that. Shift, right click, and unfold. There we are. So I've got an approximate shape. You can use some of these tools here in the UV toolkit if you want to have a play around. Um, There we go. Unfold. So you can do like use the optimize tool and just bring that around. You know, if you need to, right? Unfold tool. You can use that as well, if need be. Stretch it out a little bit more, like so. All right. And let's say you're happy with that. Uh, what we're going to aim to do now is, if I go to just go to select, go to UV shell, try that again, and just shrink that down. So what we're going to do here is we're going to export this out to Photoshop. And I'm going to do a UV, let's just go to Edge, UV uh, Snapshot. And we'll put it in our folder, just so everything's kind of collected, right? So wherever our folder is, let's go and find it. Tree test, there we are. Open that. I'm going to call it um, Leaves. Okay, apply and close. Oh, it's not doing it for some reason. Let's have a look. Why is that? 
Let's have a look. Let's try it again. Line close. There we go. Right. Then open up Photoshop. So what we're going to do now is we're going to open our snapshot, which is here. And then I'm going to go to image and sorry, adjustments and invert. <coughs> okay, so we need an image. All right, so I'm going to go to open. I think I downloaded something earlier. It was just something off the internet. Random kind of leaves. I might have put them in the folder. It's not in there. It might have been here. There we go. It's just some random art. Okay, and I'm going to go back to leaves. And I'm going to. No, let's do, we'll do that. Let's try that again. Control C, Control V. There we are. And I'm just going to. place this something like that within you could warp it as well if you like I mean use this little button here get in it's not I don't think it's entirely necessary to kind of get the absolute shape of this and I might just copy it again hold down alt and just drag on that image there maybe just oops maybe just rotate it and then maybe even warp it Yeah, you want to leave a bit of space. You don't want it going up to the edge because it'll crop it off. And let's just, let's just have a look. I'm just going to try this out and just see if... I'm just taking out part of that. So I'm just going to try something out here. Oops, a bit too far. Yeah, we go with something like that. Okay, so we know that that's in the approximate shape now. We know it's going to fall there. So when I re-import it back into Maya, it's going to fall within that uh, that UV. Uh, I'll just mush that down. Control E that down. So I'm going to export this as a PNG. I could export export it as a target. Again, if you're going into game engines, targets the preferred file to um, to do that. But I'm just going to go save as save it as a PNG leaves. Let's make sure it goes into that folder again. Tree test. Save and make sure yep, yeah, there we go, that's all right. Click OK. And then another thing I want to do is uh, see if we can just create a normal of this as well. So I'm going to go to adjustments and I'm going to take the saturation of this down and then just have a play at with the levels. Just so I can get those contrasts you know, of, of uh, light and dark. So something like that. Again, you could spend a, a quite a bit of time on this. I'm not going to. I'm going to click OK. And then in 3D.
So yeah, so to create a normal map, I'm going to go to Filter, 3D, and Generate Normal Map. If you've not used this, used this before, it's a uh, quite useful tool. When it loads up, there we go, and so it should give you an idea of like what the you know what it's going to look like alongside your diffuse layer, and you can play around with this. You can play around with some of the you know the, the depth of it and things like that, if you wish. Kind of has it on a, in a, a general sort of setting. You can invert the height, so you know, if you want to kind of like have it going the other way, you can do. All right, so that's kind of, to be honest, I mean that's kind of looking all right. You can, again, I could sort of play around with that a little bit more. I think I'll just sort of leave it as is. I'm going to click OK, and I'm going to. Save as. Again, export it to PNG. Call it Leaves Normal. Okay. Right. Back to Maya. So, if I then go into Object Mode with that go to my Lambert, <coughs> go through to Color, File, then go find the folder, and go and find the PNG. Now, here's the test. If you've imported it and it's got like a white background on there, then the white background is going to show on on the object, yeah, which is not what you it's not what you want. PNGs allow for transparency. Same thing with targets, so you don't want that. So look at the uh, same thing with the um, with the leaves. Normal. Okay, so that looks okay. We'll open that, and hey presto, we now have leaves. Yeah, which is pretty good. And then I'm just going to put the normal map in the bump mapping section here. File. Click on the black arrow, click on the folder, go and find our normals, click open. That should bar ice be showing. Oh, there we are. It took its time, I think. So there we are. So we're getting like a little bit of... It, it doesn't look too great at the moment because we're on, uh, we're on a um, sort of default lighting in in Maya, yeah. So if we kind of put this into, say, something like Sketchfab or um, a game engine, it's going to look different. It just nothing looks very pretty unless you're kind of rendering things out. It generally, just doesn't look very pretty in in Maya. Okay, so there we are. So we're kind of entering really the final stages of this. We've got our tree. And again, if you want to kind of manipulate it. Uh, more you can do, you know, play around with the vertexes. I'm just going to just have a look and see about maybe just duplicating this, rotating it. You know, so you can kind of get this kind of layering effect type thing going on. You do shift D, shift and uh, shift D again. So at least you kind of get some depth. So you can see there, you've got the kind of branches going on there. And. Um, That's looking all right. You know, it it needs a, it needs some more work, but at least you like you'd be like up and running with this in terms of just getting getting something done. You know, just getting like at least just getting like a tree model done, and then of course you know, you, unlike myself, you know, you perhaps take a bit more time over it. We 
And again, like I say, there's bits like with the branches sticking out. You might just uh, want to... I don't know why it's doing that. Vertex. Yeah, you could um, just do like tweak it and stuff. Bring these out. You want to be careful about not warping the image too much though. So it's just something to bear in mind. If you are going to sort of maneuver these things around, just be mindful of that really. But um, that's pretty much it. I'll just delete that. But that's pretty much it really. Um, hopefully you found this uh, little tutorial useful. And, uh, you know, if you're thinking about um, either just doing modeling or doing video games, whatever, then um, hopefully this has uh, shown you something that you didn't know before and something that you can um, play around with and explore a bit more. And, um, and that's it really. So thanks for watching and um, look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks a lot.